once more. That's Henry trying to in some way inspire them. Or you could take it to entire heroic ethos. Once more unto the breach, dear friends, once more. Or close up the war where our English did. In peace, there's nothing so becomes a man as modest stillness and humility. But when the blast of war blows in our ears, then imitate the action of the tiger. Stiffen the sinews, conjure up the blood, disguise fair nature with hard favored rage, then lend the eye a terrible aspect. Let it pry through the quarters of the head like the brass cannon. Let the brow overwhelm it as fearfully as doth a golden rock overhang and judgy his confounded face, swilled with the wild and wasteful ocean. Now set the teeth and stretch the nostril wide. Hold hard the breath and bend up every spirit to his full height. On, on, you noblest English, whose blood is spread from fathers of war proof. Fathers that, like so many Alexanders, have in these parts from morn till evening fought, and she their swords for lack of argument. Dishonor not your mothers. Now attest that those whom you called fathers did forget you. Be company now to men of grosser blood, and teach them how to war. And you, good yeoman, whose limbs were made in England, show us hair the middle of your posture. Let us swear that you are worth your breeding, which I doubt not, for there is none of you so mean and base that hath not noble luster in your eyes. I steer you stand like greyhounds in the slips, straining upon the start, the games of foot. Follow your spirit. Now I need this from you. Every time I say, cry God for Harry, you scream Harry. England, England, and St. George, St. George. I need you to scream it because I'm rallying you. Okay? Right. I see you stand like greyhounds in the slips, straining upon the start. The game is afoot. Follow your spirit. And upon this charge, cry God for Harry. Harry. That's a war speech. That's a war speech.